Welcome to BaseballGuys.com. I'm your host on Around the Horn, Ray Flowers. I'll start out with some of the bigger stories in the world of baseball today, and one of the biggest is the fact that King Felix, Felix Hernandez of the Mariners, will not be making his next start. His scheduled start for Wednesday has been removed because of a back issue. Now, it's not thought to be a major issue. This isn't something that anyone with the Mariners organization believes will send King Felix to the disabled list. He obviously is one of the more consistent pitchers in baseball in terms of taking the hill every five games. Look for him to skip the start, return for his next one. A uh, little bit of a concern with Hernandez's performance this year, though. It's probably more of a sample size thing than anything. The velocity is down a wee bit. Uh, the ground ball to fly ball ratio is still impressive at 1.61, but that would be a career worse, slightly below the 1.64 he had last season. But he's still just under a strikeout per inning. He's still giving the Mariners a chance to win every game he pitches. It's not his fault they don't. That offense is so bad. King Felix should be okay, but he will skip that start this week. Yolan Santana is not going to have his start skipped, but he's going to have it pushed back a couple of days. Now, he threw 134 pitches in that epic uh, no-hitter, the first in Mets history last week. I really worry about this. Not only was this a career high in innings pitch for Santana, it blew past his average. I mean, you, you even look back at his heyday. He was throwing 110 pitches a game. Now, part of that was because he's so effective at getting batters out. But for whatever the reason, his pitch counts were never very high. So I think the Mets are being very smart here, looking to pull back on the workload of Santana. He has been fantastic this season. He has exceeded everyone's expectations on the hill. But again, I'm worried about the 134 pitches, even with the couple of days back in the rotation. Uh, the reason being over 130 pitches, studies start to get a little nervous. Uh, you hit that 135 pitch mark and they say, ooh, that tough times could be ahead. So hopefully the Mets didn't, in sake of history, do something that will ruin the 2012 season of Santana. Now, Chris Young will be brought up. He's one of the guys that's going to kind of step in and help out here uh, with the Mets. He's going to make a start today on Tuesday. Uh, first start of the 2012 season. Last two years, he hasn't made it to 25 innings in the big leagues because of injury. The last time he threw 100 innings was 2008. He has always been effective when healthy. Is he healthy now? Now, reports are that he's thrown 83, 84 miles an hour in the minor leagues. That's probably not going to be fast enough to get it done at the big league level. And only, and only leaguers, easy for me to say, uh, might take a shot on Young, but I'd be very wary. His track record of ill health is extensive at this point. Just can't trust that guy. Dustin Pedroia, now there's a player you can trust. Injury, injured all the time, always plays through it, always has success. Three of the past four seasons, at least, he has done that. The other year, he did succumb to injury a bit. Now, he has a thumb issue, and everyone was very nervous that he might end up on the disabled list, but the good news is he won't. He will be in the lineup for the Red Sox on Tuesday. He's going to tough it out. He will continue to play through this thumb issue. Obviously, his performance is something to monitor because any issue to a wrist or the hands of a hitter can significantly impact their performance. But very positive news, Pedro will avoid the disabled list. Let's hope he can continue to perform at an all-star level with that thumb issue. Jamil Weeks, well, he certainly has not been performing at an all-star level. How a guy can play a third of the season and have two home runs and seven RBIs is pretty amazing. Toss in a .227 batting average, and he's been a waste. Uh, a guy that was thought to be a spark plug, an on-base percentage of .311, some you know, 15, 20 points below the league average. Jamil Weeks has done nothing at all with the bat in his hands. Now, he has stolen 10 bases, putting him on pace for about 30 steals, which is a very nice total for a middle infield option. A second baseman in AL only gets a great total. But again, so much negativity with the other four fantasy categories with Weeks. And he's also been caught five times. And studies have shown that that 67% mark that he's sitting on right now in a stolen base success rate is the break-even point, meaning that if you steal bases and your success rate is less than 67%, you're actually harming your team's ability to score runs. You're not helping it at all. You're harming it. The A's may not continue to give him the green light if he continues to struggle like this. And right now, that is the only thing he is doing to help out on the field. He had, yesterday, his first RBI in 26 games. Jameel Weeks, big-time disappointment thus far in 2012. Alex Presley, another player, was a disappointment for the Pirates. Because he was disappointing, he was sent down to the Myers. Now, a couple of things have happened. Number one, the Pirates have released... Um, Nate McClough, so he's no longer in the mix for playing time. And secondly, Presley went down to the minors and had an OPS of over 1,000 in 18 games at the AAA level. So he's been recalled. You know, the Pirates really don't have a third outfield option they can stick with on a daily basis behind McCutcheon and, and Tabata. 
So maybe Presley gets the chance. And only leaguers, of course, so I'm going to take a look at because he will get at bats. Mixed leaguers, maybe he can offer something closer to what he performed last season versus the drain that he was in 2012. Well, Rosario, guy has not been a drain at all. In fact, the problem with Rosario is he's not been playing enough. The guy only has 105 at bats this season because of the presence of Ramon Hernandez who is dealing with an injury, so Rosario is getting more work uh, right now. Remains to be seen what the Rockies will do long-term uh, with the duo. They'll probably get Hernandez back in, and the veteran with a lot of experience, but Rosario has been phenomenal at the plate. A recent run of in, in performance at the dish has got his batting average up to 248. Not a very good mark, and there is possibly uh, a floor there, much lower than that. We could be looking at an Adam Dunn type of batting average, but we also be looking at an Adam Dunn type of power outage, a power increase, power supply. What am I trying to say? The guy's got a lot of power is what I'm trying to say. Will Rosario's got nine home runs and 105 at bats. Uh, you don't need to be a super scientist to figure out if you give him 500 at bats, that's 45 plus home runs. Can he do that? No, he can't do that. He's not going to be able to maintain a 35% home run to fly ball ratio that's unsustainable. But the point is he's got legitimate power. This is a 20 home run bat. If the Rockies allow him to play enough, I don't know if they will, but anyone in the NL League that has Rosario, Got to be feeling good about it. He is beating the ball into the seats with regularity right now. And then finally, a player who's beating the ball around, all around the yard, all over the place, is Mike Trout of the Angels. He's got a nine-game hitting streak. Six of those nine games, he's had at least two hits. He's now batting 338 on the season. 338 as a rookie, uh, well, first-time, full-time player. He obviously performed last year for the Angels. But think about this. If you prorate his efforts this season thus far, over 500 at-bats, which is a very reasonable total. It obviously would be much higher than that if you played every day for 150-plus games. We'd be looking at a player hitting 338 with 18 homers, 81 RBIs, 88 runs scored, and 33 stolen bases. That's right. As of right now, Mike Trout is basically performing like a 2030 guy who's hitting 338. Bryce Harper has been phenomenal as well as a youngster for the Nationals. But the young player in baseball to watch the young player in baseball who's performing the best, and the young player in baseball who has the opportunity to be a 5x5 five five fantasy contributor moving forward, that's Mike Trout of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I'm Ray Flowers, SpaceballGuys.com. Thanks for joining me on Around the Horn. Talk to you all again soon.